the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Our story, The Short Straw. Our star, Irene Dunn. The Short Straw. A strange title. It suggests luck, chance, fate. And fate it is in our drama tonight. A drama of sheer chance. The Short Straw. Our story begins in the Philippines, the winter of Pearl Harbor. Jap troops swarming ashore on northern Luzon. The slow withdrawal of our troops toward Bataan. This is a true story, the story of a woman, the first member of the United States Naval Service to receive the Legion of Merit Award, the story of Nurse Ann Bernatitis, United States Navy. It was the day of Christmas Eve, 1941, Manila, an open city, all military personnel ordered evacuated. They piled into an old school bus, the nurses and doctors of surgical unit number five. And we were off to Lamai, a little town on the Tan. I don't know what the situation will be at Lamai, Ann. We're going to have to make do with what we find. Oh, well, we'll manage all right, Dr. Moore. I'm sure we will. That's me puzzled. Did you ever hear of a military hospital at Lamai? No, I didn't even know we had one there. I supposed to have one there. A 1,000 bed hospital, so say my orders. Well, oh, this jungle we're riding through is thick enough to hide a dozen hospitals. Green, thick, and perspiring. Oh, Give me the creep. This is it. The mine. The biggest little one horse town out of the ten. Everybody out. Oh, boy, do I need a There's a hospital. There's nothing here but some old warehouses. Got around, in. I want to check the supply truck. Right, Doctor. The sound of those guns, casualties will be in here before morning. <laughs> Lamar fronted on Manila Bay, just one muddy street crowded with refugees. Some in Calais the cars, but most on foot. The little they could salvage from their homes piled in bundles on their backs. I pushed my way through the crowd to what seemed an office in one of the ramshackle warehouses. Hello? Anybody home? Hello? Hello yourself. I'll be right with you. I'm Jones, Corporal Jones. What can I do for you? I'm Ann Bernatitis, surgical unit number five. Where's the hospital, Corporal? Don't look now, but you're in it. Here? In this warehouse? Sure. Come back here, I'll show you. Huh? Take a look. A whole thousand bed hospital. In crates. Beds, tables, the whole works. In crates? Corporal, how many men do you have with you here? Just about a company. The rest of the outfit's been moved up north into the line. All right. Get out and round up your men. Find as many natives as you can to help. Uh, and women, too. They can help scrub this place down. Anne? Anne, where are you? I'm back here, Dr. Moore. Anne, the casualties are coming in. It's one serious case. A little Filipino boy, badly burned. Needs surgery immediately. Corporal, that crate there, it's marked operating table. Break it out. <laughs> It's all right, Sonny. It's all right. I brought you some coffee. I will guarantee nothing but that it's hot. Thanks. How's the kid coming? He's still in a coma, but he's pulling out of it. 
This is hot. But it's good. Drink up. You need it. You know what? I can't figure something out, ma'am. Uh, miss. Uh, miss. Miss. All the other nurses are on you. You're Navy. <laughs> Doesn't figure. Well, blame it on a short straw. A short straw? I don't get it. Well, I was at the Navy Hospital at Canacao, and we had some patients to be evacuated to Army Hospital in Manila. The head nurse had us draw straws for the missing. I caught the short one. Simple as that. I see. Wonder how those others are making out. If they got away. I heard over the Hello. radio that the jet... Hello, please. Uh-oh. Hello. Well. Hello, please. Well, if it isn't our patient. Hello. I... I got burned. Yes. Your hand. How I fight Japs now. Take it easy. Tell me how I fight Japs. Easy, kid. How I fight Japs. Now, 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 now. What's your name? Philippe. You're a brave boy, Philippe. You've proved that already. You can still fight the Japs. How? You, you tell me how. Well, you can fight without guns, Philippe. You can fight with your heart and, and your faith. Don't. No, I understand that. You can teach others to be as brave as you are. You can help them have faith. Only guns stop jobs. Ah, now, guns can't stop anything. It's the people behind the guns. People like you, Philippe. Wonderful little people with tremendous courage. <laughs> Time the rumble of the guns grew closer. We literally worked our hearts out setting up that hospital in less time than it takes to tell every cot, every table, and every cabinet was uncrated and washed down. Surgical unit number five, more. Yep. Yes, I see. All right, yes. Corporal. Yes, sir. Where's Miss Lenatitis? Well, I saw her in the ward when I came in, sir. Ann? Yes, Dr. Moore? Just had orders on the phone. We have to pull out. Evacuate? Uh-huh. Oh, no, we've just gotten set up here. No. Where to now? The whole line is pulling back. The road to a place called Little Baggio. Maybe we can catch our breath there. <laughs> Everything we did at Lamai, we did over again at Little Barrio. Hospital ward sprang up in the midst of a jungle. A tool shed became an operating room. A garage shed became a kitchen. And always, all day, all night, the wounded were brought in. Little Barrio. Yes, sir? Let's have a hand here. Right. And take over. Be careful, be careful. They're getting those men out. Yes, ma'am. Here, wait a minute, wait a minute. Carry this boy directly to surgery. Right. That tent there. Right. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Jimmy. And this hand. Put him yeah. in Ward B. Easy there, soldier. Here. Let me help you out. Thanks, miss. You feel all right? Yeah. Just a chunk of scrap iron on my shoulder. Look after the others. Uh, got a cigarette? Sure, here. Take the pack. Thanks. Uh, would you mind lighting one? No. you got a dirty face. Oh, mercy me. What will the neighbors think? <laughs> you sure you're all right? Sure. Just to be sure, let me have a look at that one. Look, Bess, you've got more important business. I'll wait my turn. I remember we built a platform on a tree high enough to look out into the bay. Whenever we had a breathing spell, we'd climb up and search the horizon for some sign of ships. A dab of smoke on the horizon. Corporal Jones was up there one day with Philippe, and I was there, too. Yeah. Like waiting for the brownies to win a pennant watching for those ships. Did you think never going to happen? Well, at least it's peaceful up here. It's like a Sunday back home. Where's home? Pennsylvania. Place called Exeter. Ever hear of it? Nope. Me too. You too what? Me too, nope. (laughs) 
Like so there's a nice little oak and ivy town. Hey, Ellie, hey, well, let's get down from here. Quick, come on. Here, let me have your hand. No, don't worry about me, Jones. Help Philip. Okay, come on. I'm all right. Yeah. Look, look, look. There they are. Stop playing. Come on, come on. This is the split print. No, no, I've got to get to the hospital. Hey, wait. <laughs> Under the bed, hurry. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, soldier. This may hurt you a little. I've got to get you under the bed. Okay. okay. Just put your arm around my shoulder. Okay. And just hold on. Just a minute. Just a minute. Okay. Just a minute. Thanks. Thanks a million. Nurse, I need a nurse in here. All right, doctor, I'm coming. Corbin, help those other men. Man on the operating table. The nurse is hidden. Yes, Doctor. <laughs> that plane's coming back. Will you get out of here, Cody? Get in the cellar. Oh, please be quiet. I tell you, don't worry about me. You're more important than I am. Get in the cellar. Stay. He's coming back. Get out of here. Don't worry. Lie back. You're crazy. With the bombing of the hospital at Little Bog Hill, the last act of the drama of the town began. Inch by inch, our men were forced to give way. Torn and tired men streamed past the hospital in ever-mounting numbers. Finally came the orders for evacuation. Leave everything else for the instrument, man. We'll need them. Yes, Dr. Moore. Corman. Yes, ma'am. The men in this ward can be moved into ambulances. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Philip, eh? I, I, I come and say goodbye. Oh, what's going to happen to you, Philip? Where will you go? Oh, I go into the hills. I fight jacks. Why hell on me, but I, I fight good. <laughs> I know you'll fight good. Where you gonna? To the rock. To the one place the Japs will never take. We're going to Corregidor. <laughs> to the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Irene Dunn. And now Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. High on the list of things that affect children's health is tooth decay. Even today, it affects 98 out of every 100. And now, during National Children's Dental Health Week, is a good time to do something about it. Part of the answer is preventive dentistry, proper diet and brushing, regular visits to your dentist. Among the scientific tools your dentist uses to safeguard your health are x-ray examinations. And today, the x-ray serves you better than ever. DuPont dental x-ray film, for instance, is designed for faster exposures. It's less affected by movements of the patient. That's why it's so suitable for examinations of children's teeth. Along with other DuPont x-ray products, DuPont dental film contributes to better health as one of the DuPont companies. Better things for better living through chemistry. And now we return to our cavalcade story, The Short Straw, starring Irene Dunn as the Navy nurse Anne Bernapitis. Those of us who were there will never forget the nights of April 8th and 9th. We were huddled into barges, launches, anything that could float. Under the fire of Japanese guns, we shuttled across to Corregidor, to the rock. Corregidor looked like heaven to us. They even had electric lights. But the lights illuminated scenes of tension and anguish. 11,000 men and women jammed underground. All their thoughts back with the men left on the tan, still fighting, still holding on. Anne, 
There's no more room in the ward. We'll have to line the new cases up in this corridor. All right, get the orderly to put up cots right, right along this hall. Oh. Another convoy of wounded is coming in. We'll start using the next bathroom. Uh, All right. Attention, please. Wait, wait, wait. Attention, hold it, hold it, girls. Here is the commanding general. The town has fallen. Oh. But the spirit that made it stand, a beacon to all liberty-loving people of the world, cannot fall. Our prayers are with the men we left behind. Oh, poor boy. What will happen to him now? I don't know. No one knows. <laughs> Hello there. Hiya, miss. How's the arm? Oh, it'll do. What's got me is trying to breathe the worn-out fog they're pumping into this tunnel. Well, no, after what we went through across the way, is it, isn't this place a sort of heaven? Miss, heaven can't be a whole dog underground. Heaven is mess room on a cruiser with a chow line moving fast. You're lazy. You bet. So am I. No kidding. Navy nurse? Uh, sure. But I, I thought all the Navy nurses were caught in Manila, all in turn, Bilbao prison. Oh, no. You mean none of them got away? Well, I told you get out. None that I heard of. Okay. Oh, Excuse no. me, nurse. Is that a case? Stand aside. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. Easy now. Let him down. Right. Jones. It's Corporal Jones. Yes, miss. You got any hospitals over here you want to uncrate? Oh. All right. Orderly. Yes, doctor? You can take him to the ward now. Yes, sir. All right, Timmy. Give me a hand here, will you? Do you think he'll be all right? I don't know. I hope so. I'm so tired, I don't... Know my own name. <laughs> Pretty good, me telling you that. How long has it been since you had some sleep, in? Oh, I seem to remember a couple of hours sleep yesterday. Day before. I'm not sure. You're terrific. Terrific. Doctor, I'm one of the lucky ones, and I know it. Why, some of the army nurses who came over with me have been at it for a week, working right through. And Rosemary Hogan, Rita Palmer, badly wounded. Some of the girls never did get off the tan. Where are they now? And all the Navy nurses I worked with at Canacao, all interned by the Japs. Oh, don't throw any poses at me, Doctor. I drew the short straw. But it must have been the lucky one. You know what I heard today, Miss Burns? I didn't... I don't think you ought to talk so much, Jonesy. I like to talk. I heard some scuttlebutt. About what? You. Now, what did you hear? You're going home. You're delirious. No, that makes sense. This place can't hold out forever. They gotta get you off. Ah, you're talking too much. That's what they should do. This ain't no place for a woman. Now, 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 you listen to me. Ever since I joined the Navy, nobody's ever asked me where I wanted to go, and nobody ever will. I follow orders. But even if I had a choice, there's no place I'd rather be at this minute than here. Right here on this rock. All I've ever learned, I learned for this. And for what I can do here in Corregidor. And that's true for every other nurse on the island. Yeah. But anyhow, I... I got something to ask you. What is it? If you should be gone, would you drop in and say goodbye? Hmm? I think I wouldn't. Now, you go on. Get some sleep. It was later that night in the nurse's quarters... Look what it says in this paper. What does it say in the paper as if I didn't know, having read it from front to back 15 times the last two weeks? It says hemlines are going up this year. So what? 
I wonder if that applies to dungarees. <laughs> Don't laugh. It's a serious matter. Imagine showing up at Lady Fittlesmith's in last year's dungarees. Attention, please. Attention, please. All nurses are to report to the mess hall at once. Repeat. All nurses to the mess hall at once. I wonder what's up, Anne. Well, it's not an invitation to Lady Bittlesmith's ball, that's for sure. Let's go and find out. I understand... You're to have your gear packed and be at the assembly point at 2100. Any uh, questions? Uh, how much can we take with us, sir? As little as possible. Weight won't matter. Bulk will. Now the general has a few words to say to you. I want to read you a portion of a message I've just received from General George C. Marshall. I request that you convey the special commendations and gratitude of the War Department to the nurses on Corregidor whose service is a source of inspiration to all of us. Signed, General George C. Marshall. And now you are leaving us. Do one thing for me. When you get home, tell them how it is back here. Tell them we are waiting. That's all. Good luck and Godspeed. <laughs> I'm not going to go. Somebody's got to stay here with these men. Listen to me, Jenny. None of us wants to leave, but we've got our orders. It's not our job to ask questions. It's not our job to get emotional. They're taking us off because we'll be needed somewhere else. How do you think they're taking us off by plane? Well, I don't know. He said that weight didn't matter, but bulk did. My guess is submarine. Submarine? Oh, gee, Ann. Hey, do me a favor. Take my things with you to the assembly point. Well, wait a minute, Anne. We're due there in 15 minutes. Well, I'll be there. But you can't. I'll be there. But where are you going? To keep a promise. Orderly. Yes, miss. Where's Corporal Jones? His bed is empty. I'm sorry, miss, but he passed away an hour ago. Oh, no. Awful nice guy. Yes. Bye, Jonesy. A Navy launch took us out to sea towards a rendezvous point somewhere beyond the minefield. I'll never forget that ride. We just reached the rendezvous point when jet searchlights caught us in their glare. In a minute, shells were pounding all around us. Gotta go back. No ship will ride through this, Shelly. Pull it, stand. No, no, hold it. Look there, safety. It's a stop. scrambled onto the deck of the submarine, literally pushed down the ladder into the control room. The hatches were slammed down. Take it down. Pull ahead, full. Level off, periscope depth. Sorry for the rush act, ladies. Oh, you understand. Sure, I'll check forward to see if your bunks are ready. Glad to have you aboard. Yes. Glad to be aboard. Always. October 14th, 1943. The President of the United States approves the award of the first Legion of Merit granted to a member of the United States Naval Service. The citation... To Lieutenant Anne Agnes Bernatitis. For exceptionally meritorious conduct, as a member of Surgical Unit No. 5 during the bombing of the Philippine Islands by enemy Japanese forces, constantly in the front lines of defense, and on two separate occasions forced to evacuate to new positions after Japanese bombs had wrecked the surgical unit, Nurse Bernatitis courageously withstood the dangers and rigors of tropical combat, rendering efficient and devoted service during the tenth days of prolonged siege and evacuation. 
This is Irene Dunn. I want to say that our cavalcade story of Anne Bernatitis is ended. But her story continues. Anne Bernatitis now has the rank of commander, United States Navy. She is stationed at the Naval Hospital in Newport, Rhode Island. Through her, we want to honor all the nurses of our armed services. And to the nurses in civilian service whose lives may not have been as spectacular, but surely are no less dedicated to healing in the immortal tradition of Florence Nightingale. to Irene Dunn and the Cavalcade Players for tonight's true story. And now, Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. A scientist in a modern paint laboratory really keeps his eye on the ball, literally. In DuPont's Marshall Laboratory for Paint Research and Development, there is a very simple testing device consisting of a little steel ball and a slanting piece of glass. A fresh coat of paint is put on the glass, and the time it takes the ball to roll down the glass is recorded. Some paints let the ball roll all the way down. Others get tacky so quickly that they bring the ball to a dead stop. That paint wouldn't be so good if you had to touch up a section you had just painted. Although paint making is among the oldest of industries, the most far-reaching improvements have been introduced in recent years by research men. DuPont paint research led to Duco lacquer in 1923, helping to break a bottleneck in automobile production by providing quick-drying finishes. And during the 30s, DuPont paint scientists developed a self-cleaning house paint. John Marshall, the DuPont scientist for whom the Marshall Laboratory was named, was a pioneer investigator of man-made resins for use in quality paint. Today, the trend toward man-made ingredients continues. Now, resins, solvents, pigments, liquid latex ingredients, and many other synthetic products are giving us paints for lasting protection as well as beauty. DuPont's new sealer coater, which primes and seals at the same time, is an example of this type of development. It usually dries in less than two hours with a faint, pleasant aroma. Sealer coater makes it easier for a homeowner to do a good job himself. In the field of paint, where more than 1,200 American manufacturers must compete for the consumer's favor, DuPont scientists continually strive to bring you better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight's Dupont Cavalcade was written by Irv Tunick. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Boring. The program was directed by John Zoller. And this is Cy Harris reminding you to be with us next week when the Dupont Cavalcade will present Operation Miracle, the story of United States Navy salvage experts in World War II. Our star, Robert Preston. Ladies and gentlemen, the Heart Fund already has given support to medical progress that is saving many, many lives. More, much more has yet to be accomplished. You can speed the fight by giving to the 1953 Heart Fund. Send your contribution to Heart, H-E-A-R-T, care of your local post office. Help your Heart Fund help your heart. The DuPont Cavalcade of America came to you from the Belasco Theater in New York City and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. The proceeding was transcribed. Next, it's Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis on NBC.